The iPad A16 and the iPad Mini 7th generation both have A-series chips, and they're not quite on the same level as the iPad Air or the iPad Pro in terms of performance. But if you just want a great iPad, these are awesome options. So in this video, I'm going to help you know all the differences between the Mini and the A16 so you can decide which one is right for you. The first thing you'll notice is the iPad Mini has an 8.3 inch display and the iPad A16 has an 11 inch display, which basically feels like the iPad A16 is two iPad Minis put together. So as far as holding the iPad, the Mini is very comfortable to use. And now with iPad OS 26, you can actually resize apps and have multiple windows on it, which is a really nice touch. So this now feels like a higher end iPad than it used to. With the iPad A16, they also added the ability to resize apps and to have multiple apps open at the same time, which wasn't previously a feature on this before iPad OS 26. So that really leveled the playing field with multitasking on both of these. The main difference I noticed besides the actual screen size is the quality of the screen. So the iPad mini does have a fully laminated screen, which makes it a little bit more comfortable to use with any sort of Apple Pencil on it. And also just touching it feels a little bit better because the screen is laminated, so there's no air gap between the different layers of the screen. Both of them have a retina display, and they also both go all the way up to 500 nits of brightness, but the mini does have a higher pixel density on it. So both of these displays are pretty nice, and I like watching videos on both of them. They also both have dual speakers, and I find the speaker quality on them to be pretty much identical. If you really want to take your viewing experience up a notch, I would recommend using AirPods or some sort of wired headphones instead. These also both support the P3 color gamut on the display, and really the display quality is pretty close. They also both have a single USB-C port, and the speeds on the minis top out at 10 gigabits a second, and on the iPad A16, unfortunately, this is just a 5 gigabit a second speeds. So this one's going to give you faster speeds if you want to keep more devices plugged into a dock or something like that on the iPad. So this one will be better if you want to use it with multiple peripherals or if you want to plug it into external displays, you can expect better performance out of the iPad mini and the iPad A16. The iPad A16 is also known as the 11th generation, but it's called the A16 because it has the A16 chip, which has a 5-core CPU and a 4-core GPU. The iPad mini 7th generation actually has the A17 Pro chip, which has a 6-core GPU and a 5-core CPU. So you technically get a little bit better processing and performance on the iPad mini than you do on the A16. You also get 8 gigabytes of RAM on the iPad mini, and you only get 6 gigabytes of RAM on the iPad A16. They also both are pretty lightweight, and they kind of have that classic iPad look with no physical button on it except for the volume button and the lock button. They also both have a Touch ID button on the top of them, and they both support capacities from 128 gigabytes at the starting point and 512 on the higher end. Now, the accessories are where these start to get a little bit different. So the iPad mini does support Bluetooth keyboards, and you can also use Bluetooth keyboards with the A16. But the A16 also has the Magic Keyboard Folio case available, which is cool because it adds a trackpad and a keyboard and it folds up really compact. I really like the Magic Keyboard Folio with the iPad. So if you want to use a keyboard case, the iPad A16 is going to be a better option for you. The next difference is in the Apple Pencils. The iPad A16 supports either the Apple Pencil USB-C or the original Apple Pencil if you use an adapter, which the iPad Mini supports either the Apple Pencil Pro or the Apple Pencil with USB-C. Which the nice thing about the Apple Pencil Pro is, not only does it magnetically attach, it magnetically pairs and charges, which is a lot more enjoyable to use than having to pair it using a USB-C cord. So if you want to use the Apple Pencil, you're probably going to prefer the laminated screen and the ability to magnetically charge it on the iPad Mini over getting the iPad A16. A couple of other small differences, they both have a single camera on the back. The iPad A16 has the landscape FaceTime camera on the front of it which is really nice because it does support center stage and it's very easy to just look directly at it whenever you're on a call. On the iPad mini, it actually has the camera at the top of it in portrait mode, which I think it would be a little bit better if it was on the side instead. It would just make this a better device for use for video calls instead. So both of these support iPad OS 26. They both have great displays. They're very fun to use. You really just got to decide, do you want the smaller size of the iPad mini or do you want the larger size of the iPad A16? It's not really about power because both of these just have A series processors. So if you want to get even more power and you want to get basically computer-like performance in an iPad, you've got to get the Air or the Pro instead to get one of those M-series chips instead of the A-series chips. So you can expect to get very similar performance out of both of these because they both have A-series chips, even though the one on the iPad mini is technically a little bit better than the A16. I think if you're trying to decide between the two of these, there's really a couple things you need to ask. And one of the biggest, of course, is price. The iPad A16 starts at $350 for the 128 gigabyte model, and the iPad mini starts at $500 for the 128 gigabyte model. If you want to get the keyboard case, then you need to get the iPad A16 so that you can get that magic keyboard folio. Otherwise, you can always use this with the Bluetooth keyboard or mouse if you want to on the mini, but I don't think that's going to be as enjoyable of an experience. 
If you want to do multitasking, you also now have the choice of getting either the Mini or the A16. It works well on both of these, but with the iPad A16, you are going to get double the screen real estate. So I think this is going to be a better option if you want to have multiple apps open at the same time because you do have more screen space that you can use versus the iPad Mini. You're probably going to have to go back and forth between apps more often or else just have the apps a little bit smaller. So if you want something that's going to be a little bit bigger of a screen, give you more space to use, that's when I would get the iPad A16. If you also want to have a slightly bigger screen for writing larger notes on, that's when I would get the A16. But if you want to have the better laminated screen that's going to be more enjoyable to use for taking notes, that's when I would get the Mini instead. Also get the Mini if you really want to be able to use this one-handed, if you want to use this for reading. It's also a little bit more comfortable to type with your thumbs on the Mini over the A16 as well. So it's really a completely different experience. The Mini is this handheld, small and compact iPad, and the A16 is this larger iPad that does take a little bit more space up. It's a little bit heavier as well, still very lightweight because of the slim size that Apple is known for. So which iPad do you prefer, the iPad Mini or the iPad A16? Let me know in the comments below which one you would pick. If you're interested in buying either of these, I do have links to buy in the description below. Like this video, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any upcoming content.